Welcome to Herman's Head, number seven. Number seven. So we're going to talk to you about the bones of both the cranium and the facial, starting with the cranium. The first bone we look at is the frontal bone, which is in the front. In the front. Right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Now, on the frontal bone, there is one structure you need to know, which is called the glabella of the frontal bone. And later on, we'll do the glabellar reflex, where we'll tap this and it'll make you blink. Where you get to hit your classmates with mallets. Boink, 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 boink. Mm -hmm. Now, the next guy on our list are the parietal bones. Now, there are two parietal bones, a left and a right. Now, they are separated from each other by the sagittal suture running right down the middle. And they are separated from the frontal bone by the coronal suture. Just like where you would put your crown. We all need to wear a crown. We do. We do wear a crown. There we go. Now, the parietal bones are going to be separated from the occipital bone in the back by the lamboid suture, which is black. It's not really, it's not really colored in on, on the real skull. <laughs> yeah, we don't get that. We don't, it's not real. Now, on the occipital bone, there's one structure you need to know, and these are called the occipital condyle, which are surrounding this big hole. Ooh called the foramen magnum. So the occipital condyles are going to be those two raised portions around that hole. Now the occipital bone and the parietal bone are both going to touch our temporal bone on the side of the skull and they'll be separated by the squamous suture. So parietal bone and temporal bone will be separated by the squamous suture. So here's parietal and here's temporal and here's our squamous suture. So on the temporal bone there are three things you need to know. Um, one of those is the mastoid process, which is the big bump right behind your ear. And then your ear will be the external acoustic meatus, which is that hole right there. Also sometimes called the external acoustic or auditory meatus, either way. And then you have the mandibular fossa on the temporal bone, which is right where the mandible, which is your jawbone, will be touching the temporal bone. We can take another look at that fossa. On this model, we have opened up and we took his jaw off. Yep, took his jaw off. He's the jaw dropping experience. So this is, uh, on the fake models, this is this rubbery area. This is the fossa right in there. That's gonna hold the jaw bone on pretty well. Yep. Now the other two cranial bones to look at are gonna be the ethmoid bone and the sphenoid. Now the ethmoid bone I seem to find easiest if you stick your fingers straight into the dude's eyes and squeeze. Stop. <laughs> squeeze. That is going to touch either side of the ethmoid bone. Now there are two other views that you can see the ethmoid bone from. One of them is straight up the guy's nose. So there's the top part of that separation there, which is called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And then the other angle we can see is on our open skull here. If you look straight down at the front portion, that is also going to be the ethmoid bone, where we find the crib reform plate of the ethmoid bone, which will also have the olfactory foramina, which are the small holes that lead the smell up into our brains. Now if we move to our facial bones, we're going to look at the mandible. Now the mandible is our jawbone. It is the only moving uh, joint uh, 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 uh. on our whole, on the whole skull. Now on the mandible, you, you didn't know where you were in for this, kids. I, you're, yeah, we're, we're ridiculous. Now the teeth are going to be found on the mandible, and these have a specific joint or a socket called the alveolar socket, or together they are the alveolus, that hold each tooth into the mandible. Now on the side of the mandible, we have the angle, which is that big pointy protrusion you can see on some individuals, and then the ramus, which is the flat portion of the mandible. And then the condyle, the mandibular condyle, it's going to be that top flat portion that actually touches the mandibular fossa on the temporal bone. Okay. Now the vomer, 
The Vomer is one of my favorite bones because again, we get to look up the guy's nose. There's one bone that separates the left side of the nose from the right side of the nose, and that would be the Vomer. This is where you get to pick which side of your nose you want to pick. I'm not, I'm not picking my nose, I'm just pointing at my brain. You gotta poke at your vomer. <laughs> Poking at the vomer. Now here we also can see the maxilla, or the maxillary bone. There are two of them. There's the left side, and again, the right side. And the structure you need to know on here is the alveolar sockets as well. So again, where the teeth touch, the, or are held into the skull. Now we move to the rest of our facial bones. The first is going to be the zygomatic bone, which is our cheekbone. So you can see here a cheekbone that's going to be make up part of our eye as well. We also have the nasal bones, which are the little tiny pieces that are at the top of the nose. Again, there's a left and a right. That's where you hold your glasses on your face. I always need that, otherwise they'd fall down. Right. And we also have the lacrimal bone, the left and the right lacrimal bone. And lacrimal means what, Kareem? <gasps> tears. Tears. So if you're crying, you're going to lose your tears on the medial side of your eye. And that also connects to your nose, which is why when you cry, you have to blow your you nose. You have to blow your nose. Fantastic. Now the last one we have to look at is the palatine. Now this one is on the bottom of the skull, so I'm gonna flip this thing over. And if we look at the roof of the mouth, there's actually two bones here, if you can see it. The maxilla, which is the largest portion of the roof of the mouth, and the palatine, which is at the back, which is where our uvula hangs off, or our dangly ball. <laughs> the hangy-do. The hangy-do, yep. yes. <laughs> so that's going to be it for the bones here on the cranium and the facial bones. The last thing I want to look at are going to be the foramen. And foramen means what? Hole. hole. So there are three major holes, I should say four major holes you guys have to know. Um, and this is where arteries and veins are going to be popping in and out of the skull. And nerve components. And nerves, that's true. So we have three pipe cleaners here that are coming through. The green one, which is going to be our optic canal, or the optic foramen, which is going to pop from the inside as well as, let's see if we can get a shot, the outside. So it pops right through, through the back portion there as the optic foramen. Now we also are going to see the jugular foramen, which is right next to, again, the big hole. Yeah, there we go, foramen magnum. magnum. So the jugular is going to be the white one that's right there. It's going to go straight down the jugular vein will exit. So here it is from the other side. So you can see it from the bottom, and then right next to it is going to be the last one you need to know, which is our carotid. carotid. And the carotid foramen is going to hold the carotid artery that will then exit down through the neck. Or actually goes up to the head, I suppose. Okay, so I think that is it for all Perfect. of our holes and bones, and wow. we will let you go and move on to arms and legs.